they could go to the lab, grab some dino DNA from this tick, throw it inside a crocodile egg, and presto, cook up some real live dinos. Can they do it? Do we want them to do it? One, two, three, four. Grandpa studied dino bones. Sam and Ali loved just what he did. Oh, they really took his work. Hunting on the internet for all the dino stories they could get. Oh, they really took their work. Ali and Sam thought of a plan. Got a show on the cable station about dinosaur digs. What scientists think they're piecing it together? Bonehead, detectives of the paleo world. Bonehead, detectives of the paleo world. Hey guys, pick up that remote control and turn up the volume. Come on, louder, louder. It's time for another prehistoric mystery on... The Bonehead Detectives of the Paleo World. I'm Sam, and this is my trusty cousin, Allie. We're back on the Dino Trail. Today's question comes to us from Paleo fan Dennis Richmond of Oakland, California. He left us this message. Hey, Sam and Allie. Dennis Richmond here. Hey, I'm on the phone. I just watched Jurassic Park for the 20th time last night. It's so awesome. But every time I watch it, I still wonder, is that really possible? Could they actually make a dinosaur from a bug they found in amber? Super question, Dennis. And as you know, only super questions get to be the Bonehead Detective's question of the day. Can you really clone a dinosaur? To find out, we're going to look deep in the heart of a stone called amber. And a good place to start is the tropics. Where in the tropics? How about the Dominican Republic? It's a beautiful country that's part of an island called Hispaniola. Hispaniola is right here, in the warm waters of the Caribbean Sea, a few hundred miles south of Florida. Santo Domingo is the capital city. And there's lots of amber for sale in the local street markets. Amber is really beautiful, so most of it is made into jewelry, like earrings and necklaces, and sold to all the tourists who come here on vacation. But the paleo detectives of the world think amber is beautiful for a different reason. To find out what that reason is, let's zoom up to Wyoming and check in with the coolest dino detective I know, Bob Bakker. Hey, hey, Dr. Bob, what's the deal with this amber stuff anyway? Why all the commotion? You know, Sam, amber's been around in paleontology for three centuries, 300 years. People used to pick up amber in the Baltic, north of Europe. Every once in a while, they pick up a piece of this stuff, there'd be a bug inside. Ah, fossil bugs. You don't get fossil bugs very often, because when an insect dies, there's nothing really hard to get preserved. That's why amber is so incredibly important. Amber is a blob of sap that falls on the bug, completely covers it, and preserves every hair in place. Thanks a lot, Dr. Bob. You uh, wait here for a while, and Ellie and I will take an even closer look at how amber gets made. And to do that, it's back to the Dominican Republic. Only now we're out in the foggy, mountainous jungle. It was in the jungle a lot like this that the story of amber began. Now these trees are a lot like the ones that made the amber we're looking for. What happened was gobs of sap dripped out of the trees. Why? It was their defense system, that's why. Defense against the swarm would eventually die. The sap trap would fall off the tree and drift to the bottom of the river. Next came millions of years under the mud. And then, ta-da! You've got some of that rock-hard time capsule known as amber. And there it sat, all covered up with Dominican dirt until somebody decided it was worth digging up. Like these modern-day amber hunters. The guy with the backpack is amber hunter extraordinaire Roy Larimer. He's just hiked through miles of hot, steamy jungle. And believe it or not, that was the easy part. Now he's headed into this hole in the ground, into a real live amber mine. It looks kind of cramped in there. And hot, too. It can get up to 100 degrees in these mines. The good part is, they can find a couple of pounds of amber every day. There you go. Un momento. Hey, looks like you found something already. 
encontró algo. Oh, encontró. But it looks kind of beat up. That's because it's not polished yet. But Roy doesn't have time to dig up all the amber he needs by himself. So to really stock up, he heads to the village Amber Mart. His friends here know just what Roy's looking for. Looks like Roy's found another precious nugget to take back home with him. Roy's work is done here in the Caribbean, and now it's time to take his fossil treasure to the experts. They're going to try to crack the amber, and this case, wide open. <laughs> so that's where amber comes from. Does this show rock or what? But that's only the beginning of the story of amber. Discovery Kids will be back. Welcome to my treehouse. Don't miss Bendy the Jungle Girl, only on Discovery Kids. Come on. One animal that is sticky and slimy is the leech. I love him. at 5 p.m. Eastern, only on Discovery Kids. Would you like to double, triple, or even quadruple your income and eliminate your credit card debt? I make $5,000 a month in residual income. These people got started by getting a free DVD that showed them the way to financial freedom. I'm going to be making over $8,000 a month this month. We made over $18,000 last month. Our free DVD will guide you into the perfect home-based business. Respond now while this is still a free service. Go to 24makethemoney.com. That's 24makethemoney.com. Hey, my people. Life here in Bailey keeps getting wilder every day. Yep, it's a wild life, but it's my life. <laughs> Darcy's Wildlife, Monday through Saturday at 10 Eastern at DK. Discovery Kids is back. Let's get back on the Amber Trail. We found some amazing samples with Roy in the Dominican Republic. But what do mummified bugs in Amber have to do with dinosaurs? Luckily, there's a certain paleo sleuth who knows the answer to that one. If you want to understand Tyrannosaurus rex, you've got to understand bugs. If you want to understand Triceratops, you've got to understand bugs. Bugs spread disease, and disease is one of the biggest killers of big animals today. It was that way in the Jurassic and Cretaceous. If you were a bull T-Rex fighting and gnashing with your teeth and pulling prey apart, what may kill you is the bug biting your rump, giving you a virus. You've got to worry about bugs. Which means if you want to know how the dinosaurs went extinct, and I know you do, then bugs might be the answer. So that's why amber is so valuable to bonehead detectives. If you think about it, it's a kind of crystal ball. You can see all the way back to 20 million BC, and sometimes even further back. Scientists can learn different things from amber, depending on how old it is. So let's go back now, all the way to the golden age of amber. Here we have the magnificent and wacky bone of time. This is the Mesozoic era, otherwise known as the Dino Days. Most amber comes from way over here on the right, way after the dinosaurs died out. But that amber doesn't tell us anything about the dinosaurs. True, but more and more amber is being found over here in the Jurassic and the Cretaceous. It's loaded with all sorts of cool dino era knickknacks. Like bugs and plants, and maybe even the biggest prize of all, DNA. And that's the stuff that gets Dr. Bob and all the other dino detectives so pumped up. And nobody is more pumped up than the people here. Welcome to the American Museum of Natural History in New York City. This place is buzzing with paleo activity. Check out insect detective Dave Grimaldi. When it comes to ancient bugs, Dave is king of the hill. It never gets boring. I mean, it's, it's almost an obsession going through this material. Um, uh, the thrill never stops. And um, I've seen hundreds of thousands of pieces of Dominican amber. And when you find something new you've ever seen that you haven't ever seen before, it's still thrilling. No wonder Dave's so jacked. Amber hunter Roy has finally arrived with his bag of amber treasure. And, uh, what'd you get, Roy? We got something special. Oh, excellent. And now things get really exciting from a bonehead point of view. Dave's going to inspect these pieces with his high-powered specs to see what they've got inside. Here's some more wildlife that got caught in the sap trap. 
Wow, they're so well preserved. It almost looks like they're alive. Now check this out, a whole entire lizard. Actually, that looks more like a gecko to me. Okay, so it's a gecko. It's still awesome. And thanks to Dave's amber-piercing x-ray machine, we can even see inside the little fella. It looks like he put up a pretty big fight against the amber. But cool as the gecko is, Dave's main focus is on prehistoric bugs. For scientists like myself who are interested in the history, the evolution of life, insects are the natural thing to study. They're the most diverse organisms on Earth, the most abundant kind of animals on Earth. And they're also among the earliest land animals. In those terms, insects are evolutionarily probably the most successful life form on our planet. Over 400 million years ago, insects were already walking, flying, creeping, and crawling all over the Earth. Their story started before the dinosaurs even, but there's one big difference. The bugs are still around. What this is a, is a um, small piece of Dominican amber with an inclusion of a common stingless bee, um, Proplobea dominicana in it. Let's, let's zoom in right here just to see what kind of detail we have. That's an electron microscope that Dave's using. It lets him get a super close look at the bee that's encased in the amber. On the screen, the bee looks 20,000 times bigger than it really is. And because of that, Dave can even see those tiny bits of pollen stuck to the bee's tail. That's important, because if something as small as pollen is preserved, then it might be possible to also get some of the bee's DNA. Technology has revealed a level of preservation that was unexpected, uh, soft tissues, um, things like muscles and organs are intact in these things. Uh, they're, they're dried out, but it's beautifully embalmed. I mean, ancient Egyptian morticians would have been envious of this kind of embalming. Now check this out, a prehistoric tick. Now what do ticks do? I'll tell you what they do. They latch onto animals and drink their blood. So this guy's last meal might have been a T-Rex. But can they get blood from a stone? Is there any dinosaur DNA in the amber? Here's the story. DNA is the basic material in your cells that gives you your special characteristics. Every animal has its own DNA code, including this T-Rex. Now this is the fun part, making a living dinosaur from the DNA that they're trying to dig out of the amber. It's called cloning. To make a clone, you need some of the animal's DNA and an egg from the same kind of animal, or one that's a lot like it. Scientists have already cloned animals like sheep. That wasn't so hard because there are plenty of live sheep around to get DNA and eggs from. But to make a clone of a dinosaur, you'd need some dino DNA and then an egg from a bird or crocodile to put it into. But nobody knows if it can really be done. That's what the scientists in this lab are trying to figure out. And I sure hope they figure it out soon. You know, I've always dreamed of having a pet raptor. But what's the rush? I'm not gonna be young forever. Will the experts in the lab beat the clock? Will Sam get the raptor puppy he's always wanted? The answer's next. Discovery Kids will be back. Saturday on Grossology. I'll dish up an outbreak of diarrhea that'll go down in history. One minute I'm fine, then bam! I need a toilet big time. He's talking about the tracks, the big D. Enough, please! Grossology, Saturday at 6 Eastern in Real Tunes on Discovery Kids. <laughs> What can you dot, then spray, for fun that stays? Aqua Dot! The magical dots you create, spray, and play. And get ready for the all-new Aqua Dot Super Studio playset. Start with a design and pop, pop, pop your Aqua Dots. And here's the trick. Spray with water to make them stick. Aqua Dot colorful balloons or an awesome aqua rocket ship. It quickly dries so you can make it fly. You can even Aqua Dot in 3D to make a palace, a train, or an Aqua Dot farm. The complete Super Studio playset includes the pop and load bin, the speed dryer, the aqua sprayer, two trays with hand designs, a dot scooper, and a lifter. 600 Aqua Dots, plus the model making guide, all for $29.95. You'll also get 150 Aqua Glow Dots that light up in dark spots. You can call or log on and we'll double all your Aqua Dots free with your paid order. Order your Aqua Dots for $29.95 plus $8.99 shipping and handling you can call 1-800-621-3047 you must be 18 or older to order come on 
Fine, let's go! Ty and Abby are the coolest special agents you'll ever meet. When duty calls, they're the first on the scene to scope out the stink. It smells like a combination of saliva and nasal mucus. Grossology, Saturdays on Discovery Kids. When you struggle with credit card bills every month, you're not just in debt. Debt is all around you. I see people every day that are on the brink. They're going to go over the edge, and at the bottom is a bankruptcy, and we pull them back, and they appreciate it. You do get to consolidate your payments. You don't have to worry about making one payment a month instead of making three, four, or five. The people who provide Care One credit counseling services know how to help you get out of debt and get on with your life. Care One Debt Management Program, it is your path out. People are truly amazed when they call us and they see what we can do to help them. I mean, the relief in their voice is just, it makes the job worthwhile. And so my advice is don't struggle with it. Look for a solution today. Call us because we can do amazing things. Gather up your bills and talk to the people who can help, to the people who care. Call for Care One Credit Counseling today. Care One for you. Discovery Kids is back. Okay, let's get back to the lab and sneak a peek into the microscope. The mystery of dinosaur cloning keeps growing all the time, but is it really possible? In Dave Grimaldi's lab, they like to think anything is possible. But before you can grow a T-Rex, you need to get some T-Rex DNA. Here's the first step. Dave uses a high-speed saw to buzz off the amber. He's gotta cut it just right. If he saws into the insect, he'll ruin it. But if he doesn't get close enough, he can't get it out. He's hoping there are some surviving strands of DNA in the bug. And that it's still in good condition. It's science fiction now, but someday it might be possible to get the blood out of the hungry bug that bit a T-Rex. And then... Jurassic Park, here we come. Don't pack your bag, Sam. We're not there yet. Scientists at the Museum of Natural History have been trying to get this right for over 10 years. Then a couple of years ago, they finally did it. They cloned a dinosaur? Wait, I never heard about that. Well, nothing quite that spectacular. What they got was the DNA from an ancient termite, like this one. It wasn't the complete DNA code for the termite, but it was a start. But what about the big guys? Has anyone found any dinosaur DNA? I'm glad you asked. Let's go out to Montana and check in with Mary Schweitzer. She's found something that just might be the real thing. Mary's examining a bone from a T-Rex that may hold the secret to dinosaur life. She was looking at that bone one day when she noticed something incredible. The blood vessels in the bone might have been preserved. And get this, she also saw what she thought might be red blood cells. Now, if T-Rex blood had lasted that long, it meant T-Rex DNA might have too. And from tiny DNA, mighty T-Rex just might grow. So she sent a sample to Raul Kano's lab. Raul and his team were already in the history books for extracting 120 million year old weevil DNA. So he was the right man for the job. And when they worked on the T-Rex bone, they thought they'd done it again. That's right. They thought they'd found actual T-Rex DNA. The next step is cloning a real dinosaur, just like in Jurassic Park. Well, Sam, Detective Mary isn't ready to become a cloning cheerleader yet. I could never say I've isolated T-Rex DNA. That's not something we could ever prove. And the only way that anyone could make the claim that they've isolated dinosaur DNA is to grow a dinosaur. And that is not possible with ancient DNA. Don't give up, guys. There's still hope. The next bonehead detective is following another DNA trail. Yeah. Scott Woodward and a bunch of other boneheads found some tiny ancient bone fragments in a Utah coal mine. They couldn't say for sure who the bone belonged to, but they did notice something amazing, a dark spot. What was it, blood? Could it actually be real DNA? When we first saw that dark spot on the gel, it was both very exciting and also kind of scary because uh, this isn't supposed to happen. You know, this is 80 million years old. There's not supposed to be any DNA. Was it DNA or not? To check his findings, Scott ran a test comparing the mystery DNA to an elephant's. The results were very intriguing. 
These four rows represent dinosaur sequence, and these four rows represent an Asian elephant sequence across the same portion of the gene. If you look real close, you'll notice that they're not very similar, that they're, the patterns are not similar in these two areas, which mean that the dinosaur and the Asian elephant were not very closely related. In fact, the DNA Scott found wasn't like any modern animal. Was that because it was from an extinct animal? Like a dinosaur? There's no way to say for sure, Sam. But if it was, then in theory, they could think about bringing it back to life. Next, our amber hunters take us to a totally exotic place. And if we're ever going to clone a real dinosaur, this is where the DNA is going to come from. You don't want to miss it. <gasps> Discovery Kids will be back. The agony. The ecstasy. The weird. The sweat, the tears, the rooms. Trading Spaces, Boys versus Girls, Monday through Saturday, 10.30 Eastern at DK. All across our nation, millions of reliable individuals join the ranks of the self-employed. These dependable entrepreneurs provide their service and skills to a vast and varied people, pumping life into the greatest country in the world. These dedicated individuals have chosen a career where they pay 100% of their health insurance premiums, resulting in many carrying no insurance at all. That's where we help. We provide affordable health insurance to Americans whose dreams are as big as their hearts. We're the mega life and health insurance company. For affordable health insurance, call 800-780-5131, 800-780-5131. When entrepreneurs need reliable, affordable health insurance, they turn to the dependable specialists at the mega life and health insurance company. Call 800-780-5131, 800-780-5131. Here they come, clickety-clack down the track. It's lots and lots of trains. Two of the greatest train videos we've ever offered. And now through this special TV offer, you get two videos for the price of one. You get big trains, little trains, steam trains, diesel freight and passenger trains, even trains that blow through snow, old trains, new trains, fast trains, slow trains, smoking trains, even trains from around the world, plus toy trains, trolley trains, and much, much more when you order lots and lots of trains. Hear the whistle blow, feel the heat, smell the smoke, as these titans of the tracks thunder on by. You'll love lots and lots of trains. And remember, this spectacular two-tape set is not available in stores. So hop on board and get two great tapes for one great price. Get lots and lots of trains. Order now and get a free bonus CD of sing-along train songs. You must be 18 years or older to call 1-800-828-1200. Get two DVDs plus the free CD. Call 1-800-828-1200. That's 1-800-828-1200 for lots and lots of trains. Detecting is one of America's fastest growing outdoor activities. I saw the metal detector ad on TV and I've always wanted one. So I called. Detectors are so easy to use now. The whole family gets into it. Call for your free metal detecting catalog from White's Electronics. With a White's, all you do is turn on and go. You know, my dad had one, but it wasn't like this. The screen shows you what's in the ground before you dig it up. There's never been a better time to start detecting, so call for your free catalog today. And just for calling, we'll include White's Detecting Adventure Kit absolutely free. It gets me off the couch. Keeps me in shape. Gets us outdoors. The Detecting Adventure DVD explains the fundamentals of metal detecting and features interviews with expert treasure hunters talking about their most exciting finds. You'll also get 25 best kept secrets to finding treasure filled with important lessons to help you find more. I found a really old coin my first day out. Alex finds more than I do. You wouldn't believe what we found in our own backyard. Call for your metal detecting catalog and your free detecting adventure kit now. Discover this. Question. Which of these animals makes this sound? Makes this sound. It's the toucan. Loud and proud. The toucan's strange frog-like call can be heard for up to a half mile. Ah! Discovery Kids is back. <laughs> We're still looking for that perfect piece of dinosaur DNA. 
and Detective Dave Grimaldi has a plan, or at least a new and exciting place to look. Let's head to the great outdoors with Detective Dave. He found the weirdest dig site yet. But this time, we're not going back to the jungle. Nope, just to the suburbs. Welcome to New Jersey. Hey, guys. Hey, Dave. How you doing, Hi, Dave? Nice hot morning. When construction workers were getting ready to build houses here, they uncovered a ton of amber. And it dates all the way back to the dinosaurs. My immediate reaction was, I think I was a bit stunned. Uh, when he showed me that amber, perhaps a bit, um, uh, I was in somewhat disbelief. Um, and it really wasn't until he brought me out to this site that I, that I actually believed that there was this abundance in a particular area. In short, they hit the mother of all mother loads. And now Dave and his team are racing the clock to get as much amber out of here as possible. This is a really wonderful piece that has just come out. It's a flow, part of a flow or stalactite of, of amber and it actually has a crack in it. But these particular pieces are very likely to have insects in it, and it has some transparency to it. The amber that they're finding here is almost 100 million years old. That means it was oozing from Cretaceous trees at the same time real dinosaurs were around. Nice gemstone. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's real nice. This site is, is going to be one of the best Cretaceous deposits in the world. It might not have dinosaurs in it, but it has a remarkable array of fossil flowers preserved in the clays. Um, that plus the hundreds of varieties and species of insects and other organisms preserved in the ambers give us a unique insight into the ecology of a Cretaceous community. So this is like a super mall of ancient paleo secrets. Who knows what they might uncover at the New Jersey amber mine? Maybe a few of this little ant's friends. He's the granddaddy of all ants, the oldest one in the world. He looks pretty good for his age. Who knows? Maybe David will find a Jurassic mosquito with a perfect bit of DNA inside. It sounds like a long shot. I'm starting to get kind of disappointed. I mean, I really wanted to play with a baby raptor, but I guess it's not going to happen. Hold on, Sam. Bob Bogger's trying to get our attention. Good timing. He usually cheers me up. What is it, Dr. Bob? Hmm, that's really sad. You're never going to be able to clone a dinosaur from fossil DNA from a mosquito inside amber. You just can't do it. DNA is a long, complicated molecule. It rots real quick. We'll never do it, but I'll tell you, there is an animal we're going to clone. You'll see it soon, an extinct monster, just as neat as a dinosaur. And I'm not talking about Cretaceous. I'm talking about Ice Age woolly mammoths. See, the woolly mammoth is extinct. It's a close living relative, the Indian elephant, and their entire frozen woolly mammoths that'll give you complete sets of DNA. So you can get the little tiny egg from a female circus elephant and get the DNA from your fossil mammoth, and then pretty soon you have a herd of these great, big, furry, curlicue tusk monsters, and that will be very neat. A work like this is going on right now. People are trying to extract DNA from these frozen mammoths. They'll do it. It's only a matter of years, not decades, years. It will happen. Dude, you just made my day. Would that not be the coolest pet in the whole wide world? I mean, a baby woolly mammoth. Nice. Well, if it seems like that's the end of the dino cloning story, it's not. Experts like Dave Grimaldi are just starting to understand how much Amber can teach us about dinosaurs. And as for Dennis Richmond's big question of the day, can you really clone a dinosaur? Technically speaking, no. Ah, but big whoop, right? I mean, when they clone my boy Wooly, I'm gonna have the most beast and beast on the entire block. I nominate Dr. Bob for today's Bonehead Award. No, not so fast there, Sammy. Remember when Roy Larimer went down in that Dominican cave? Well, he came up with more than just a chunk of amber. Roy, congratulations on winning the Bonehead Award for outstanding achievement in the field of climbing down a hole. Nice going, Roy. Better luck next time, Dr. Bob. And thanks, Dennis Richmond, for that great question of the day. And remember, even if we can't clone real dinosaurs, they're still alive and well on this show. See ya. Later. Good thing you're not getting that raptor as a pet. Why? It would have been awesome. You know, Sam, those guys aren't exactly cuddly. Oh, come on, Allie. If I can make friends with my dog, Curly, I can keep some itty-bitty raptor under control. You're nuts. They're cute when they're pups, but they always go back to their wild ways when they grow up. No way. Raptors just need to be treated like family. 
Well, just don't expect me to come to Thanksgiving at your house. You wimp. Doofus.